Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our special meeting scheduled for October 30th, 2023 at 7 p.m. here in the Haverford Township Building. Uh, Board of Commissioners uh, meeting. Uh, Mr. Berman, will you call the roll? Commissioner Gundek. Present. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Here. Commissioner Cavender. Here. Commissioner Quinn. Here. Commissioner Hart. Present. Commissioner Wexler. Here. Commissioner Trombetta. Here. Commissioner Holmes. Here. Um, as our uh, police department is out thwarting any efforts on mischief night, I will ask uh, our township manager to lead the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, one God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening again. Um, tonight, uh, this is a special meeting. Um, the agenda has one subject, that is uh, the Haverford Township Library. Um, there are several items that we are undertaking tonight uh, on that uh, subject. Um, first, we will be considering um, four contract awards uh, associated with the renovation and reconstruction um, and expansion of the library. Uh, and then an, a second reading of an ordinance about the acquisition of neighboring property. Um, as this is a special meeting and there's only one subject, um, the Citizens Forum tonight is confined to agenda items only, um, but anybody who is here who would like to um, speak on the agenda items um, is invited to do so. Um, I will uh, do this in my um, usual way. I will start here in the left um, and invite anybody in the first row to speak. Welcome back, Mr. Hall. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Todd Hall, second ward. Um, ensuring that we have a modern and updated library building is an important function of township government. The facts around the cost and in this time in which the township is considering dispersing a large amount of citizens' tax dollars. Let's back up just a little bit to get, make sure that's all there. Um, ensuring we have a modern and updated library building is an important function of township governance. Uh, the facts around the cost of the renovation are of concern to me, and at this time in which the township is considering dispersing a large amount of the citizens' tax dollars to the library, it's an opportune time to review the library's mission statement and compare it to what is seen in practice. Um, first, the analysis of the cost of the project, when you look at it in terms of cost per square foot, doesn't seem to be in line with customary costs. I won't belabor the point. Others may have addressed this or will address it later. Um, secondly, the library is a land of contrasts uh, when you analyze their mission statement and their practices, and it's lack of the transparency that citizens deserve. The mission of the library is to provide the residents of the township of Haverford, as well as the public at large, with exemplary access to the broadest possible range of resources, programs, and services that enhance and enrich their lives. Now, the library does have many great books available, and I've almost always been pleased with the service that I've received at the library. Um, however, that being said, we can take a look at the resources, programs, and services to see how broad they are. Um, a popular function of libraries is story time, book reading to children. Uh, during you know, the time of 2020, 2021, this was held outdoors. This made sense. As recently as September, it was scheduled for outdoors, and it was canceled due to weather, with no accommodation made to use the building in those types of circumstances. The library does have a building, and limiting programs to outdoors only limits their services. The library provides a sticky note wall of encouragement in June for a group of people who have faced discrimination mostly in the past. Thankfully, there is much more tolerance and acceptance today. I spoke in May at the library meeting of at least 10 other groups of people, and in light of world events, I can think of another that could use a wall of encouragement and support. But only one group of people is given this wall of encouragement. This does not provide a broad range of services to many in the community who could use encouragement, just one group of people. In 2020, um, the library made it clear that the library could be used virtually. There's less of a need for that now, but the library has both in the past and currently not utilized the world uh, for community discussion, the virtual world. In 2022, the library posted about banned book week, citizens engaged in a civil discussion 
Uh, the library responded to this by shutting down uh, the comment on their Facebook page, even though it was thoughtful and non-threatening. It was explained to me that it was not done at a time when they had the resources to monitor the page due to scheduling. I appreciate that response. Uh, however, to this day, many of the library's social media posts have commenting turned off, including a post about the upcoming renovation. I thought the library, as part of providing broad resources, could be used virtually. Was it not possible to have comments open, and if there were questions that were better answered offline, to have a response of, thanks for reaching out, please email us or call us, we'll be glad to talk more. There's not a broad range of resources here. Uh, just a few more points. The library conducted their board meetings on Zoom until July of this year, 2023 well past the time that other libraries and boards were meeting virtually. It impeded the ability for public comment during a time that there was very significant, significant developments going on while the library renovation was in the planning stage. Um, final point here, the library has a close affiliation with the American Library Association. The current president of the American Library Association said libraries should be used as places for socialist organizing. The township's not in the business of providing buildings for the two major political parties in our town, so this goal of the ALA president should be taken into consideration. There is a children's author who tours with text in his books such as, As You Grow Strong, Grow in Gentleness, or Because You've Been Cared For, Care for Others. The ALA hosted a webinar to provide strategies to prevent this author or his team from using library meeting rooms. I do appreciate that the board president advised me there's a non-discrimination policy for use at the meeting rooms. However, however, I remain concerned that the library is a close partner with an organization that advocates for reducing resources to the community and desires that libraries have a directed political focus. So in conclusion, these are our tax dollars being used. Every person here when purchasing something looks at the value and quality they are getting for their purchase and this is no different. I ask the board of commissioners to give careful oversight to how the library is operating. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. The second row here on the, oh, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, of course. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, commissioners. Um, I had spoke not too long ago just to inquire about a lot of rumor that oh, was going around. Sir, I'm sorry, we just need to Oh, name. Jim Hazelton, Haverton Township. I, um, and I just wanted to clear the air because there's no sense in talking about rumor and innuendo. And it was brought at the time at that meeting, I believe it was, uh, a forum of some of the commissioners who took time out of their busy schedule to address various issues. Um, and the number that was thrown out was $18.5 million, if I'm not mistaken. Um, thus, that number of obviously has skyrocketed since then. The question or the concern that I have, and, and for one, I'm not an anti-library person. I'm an anti-waste money or spend money foolishly person. And you have to be in today's world. So I think everything has to have limitations and a budget to it. And that being said, it just seems like these costs keep going up and up and up. Um, the term library renovation, I think, caught a lot of the residents, if not a large majority of the residents, by surprise. They thought the same thing I did was a few bucks going into the library to make it a nice place where the kids can go and enjoy it and have it as a community library. Um, I, I think we should have it. It's a, it's a great amenity to have. But with the cost of, when we're starting to push the $20 million cost, um, I could produce some renderings on things where we could buy hundred and some thousand dollar sports complexes with swimming pools, senior centers, and libraries included. Sorry folks, but the dollars do not line up. They're just not there. That property on a given day may be worth $3 million if you put gold toilets in it. How do we get there? And I'm not trying to be sarcastic. What we're asking for, and I'm asking for, and a lot of there's some residents that don't want this. Period. We want an itemized list. What? Are, how do you get to that astronomical number? Not counting another six hundred thousand you want to throw on it to make a parking lot. Then we lose the tax revenue on that property. Everybody here, I've heard you guys talk over the years, and you all seem very rational. Um, some of you bring a little bit of the political nonsense into it too much, but for the end of the day. Um, you guys seem rational, but we, you know, I'm tired of hearing seniors when I walk the dog saying, you know, when are these taxes going to go down? This is crazy spending. If you break this down, and I'm not, a, I don't claim to be an economics uh, expert, but you divide the cost of what you're proposing to spend, it's about $1,500 per household. Someone pointed out, well, over the stretch of time of the loan, it wouldn't be that much of a financial burden. No, they're right. It'd probably be about $4,000 per resident. And if I'm wrong on that, I'll stand corrected. I'll humble myself and stand corrected. So that's the concern, not against the library, but 
Everybody needs to work on a budget. Some of us all might want a 40-foot yacht, but we might have to settle for a rowboat. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Hazel. Uh, anybody in the second row? Uh, anybody in the third row? Uh, in the fourth row? Yes. Good evening, everyone. My name is Monet Riley. I'm also a candidate for Ninth Ward Commissioner um, coming up. So I just wanted to come up and speak in support of the library. I know it's a great benefit to a lot of our residents. Um, I currently have two children. One's in fifth grade going to the middle school next year, and one's currently at the middle school. I know it's going to be closed for a little bit during the renovation, but as a single parent who also works full time, you can't always get to the school after school and there's no current activities bus, it's a great benefit that the library is so close to both our middle school and high school and the kids can walk there and have something to do after school that's safe instead of kind of wandering around the township. Um, also Haverford's a great place to live. If you look at our real estate in the last five-ish years in 2017, the average home price was about 377000 Now the average home price is about 523 in terms of what's selling. So people want to come here. We saw a big migration after COVID. People think it's a great place to live, and I'm glad that we're investing in that infrastructure to make sure that all of that keeps going in the right direction. Um, but one of the things I keep hearing, um, a little sidetrack is, you know, well, this money could go to something else. And I often wonder when I see those comments, what else it could go to and what people are thinking about. So I know we have a very healthy budget. I know we're able to add money to our general fund every year, which is amazing. And that's really great. And that shows, you know, we're a really healthy township, but maybe in the future, think of adding something like participatory budgeting, where you take a little piece of that and you ask the residents like, hey, you know, we brought in an extra million dollars. Like, what could that be used for? And then you can kind of get the ideas and actually hear from people what they want to see. So when projects like this come up, they don't feel like their needs and wants and their smaller parts are being overlooked for these larger projects. So something to consider in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Uh, anyone else in that row? Um, the back row. Good evening. I'm Bob Brennan, uh, 7 1. I live on Greenway Road. Good I love evening. the library. I think the library has a great program. I think taking down the house at the end of the street for what I believe is going to work out to be 11 parking spaces is a mistake. Um, I know what it's like when there's programs, the street gets busy. Uh, it's foolish to think that 11 parking spaces is gonna make a difference. I think once you put a parking lot up there, you're never gonna get a residence back there. Nobody comes in and says, I need to buy that parking lot. I wanna put my house there. They won't do it. Okay, so you've taken a rateable off the market. You've lowered the value of the houses around us and you've created 11 parking spaces. Now, if you Google the cost of the average parking space to build brand new in New York City, it's 29700 That's gone up $11,000 from the last time I stood before <laughs> this august board and talked about the library wanting to take that house. Okay? What you're talking about at 600 and some thousand dollars, and that's before you took in the cost of knocking down the house, putting the renovations in to make it a parking lot and everything else, include the cost of the rateables that you take now off the taxes. You know, now, you're talking at something at least in the neighborhood of $48,000 of parking space, okay? So what we have now is land much more valuable than New York City. And it's in the parking lot here at the library, but it's much more important and much more valuable in New York City. That's why I think it's a mistake, okay? I wish you would consider that, you know, go ahead and renovate the library. I agree with these gentlemen, $25 million is an awful lot of money. But I can think of $675,000 you can save like that. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Brennan. <laughs> Anybody else in the back row there? So moving here to the right, front row. Um, anyone in the second row? Yes, sir. Joe Lynch, Ward E. Uh, reiterate a lot of the messages that have already been shared. 
My main concern is the economics that are supporting this project. If I'm a property developer, the main thing I need is the GDV of the project. Because if you don't have the GDV of the project, and that's not openly shared, gross domestic value, what is the building going to be worth after renovations? How are we able to make any financial decisions about, is this the right site? Do we have the right conditions for this? I reiterate the parking concerns. Even if we purchase the one mill road project, how are we going to safely move people across the street? Are we going to set up some sort of dedicated pedestrian complex? Because you have people who are burning through Mill Road consistently. They're, people are flying around this township speeding, and people are getting hit on a regular basis. It's increasing. Going back to the economics, though, what are the actual costs to operate right now, and how are we going to guarantee that Mr. Goldberg's statement on February 13th is actually accurate. We're not going to increase any of the costs. That makes no logical sense if you look into increasing space, increasing the need for security, increasing the amount of people in the building, but we're not going to increase the amount of staff. Um, I reiterate the claims here. We don't have any of the quantity surveyor's sheets. We don't have the Excel sheets. How are we comparing what we're buying our supplies for from different suppliers? I think the economics of this don't really make a lot of sense, and the fact that we are increasing our costs consistently is very concerning. So that's all I really have to say, but we got to get the economics behind this. If we have the GDV that we can say to the residents, this is exactly what the building is going to be worth, and you have that appraised, you have real estate professionals come and speak exactly where I'm standing, I think you're going to have a lot more confidence from not only the community, my father's here, I've, I've been raised and grown in this township, I use this library, but this makes no logical, rational, reasonable sense. So I hope you guys have a great evening, but thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lynch. Um, anybody else from that row? Uh, good evening, Frame McHugh, Haverford resident. I have a question. What is the cap on the library project? Whenever you start a new project, what is the cap? We will not exceed X, Y, or Z. We're up at 25 million. Is it going to be 30? 35? When doing a budget, shouldn't a cap always be considered? So I, I would, is there a cap? Yes or no? Well, we'll, we'll, we'll address all the questions, uh, Mrs. McHugh, when we, when we finish all the, okay. when we hear all the comments. So that'll be great. You'll address my, my question this evening. Thank you. Yes. Uh, and thank you. Uh, is there anybody in the next row? Yes. Hi. Hello. Good evening. My name is Diana Matteo, and I live on Arlington Road. I've been a resident of this township for 40 years in my house, and I went to high school here. I remember uh, going to the library in 1979, um, and the library was maybe a shell of a bank. It was a very small building. I saw, no, I think that was, I'm sorry, that was earlier because I think the first renovations were done in 1979. So I do remember what it looked like back then. Um, I worked for the school district, school district of Philadelphia for 35 years. Education, um, intellect are very important to me. When I retired, I went to work at the Haverford Township Library. I worked there for seven years. It was the heart of the community. It's a vibrant, vital place. We need a good library in Haverford Township. Unfortunately, when I worked there, I saw a building that was held together with bubble gum and band-aids. There was one summer when the, when the air conditioner broke and we worked in 100 degree weather. And it was always something. It was always the plumbing or the heating system or the air conditioning system. This section wasn't too big. This section was falling down. This needed to be repaired. I think I see a renaissance in Haverford Township. Prices of homes have increased. Businesses are coming to Haverford. When people move to Haverford Township, they not only look at the parks and recreation, they look at the schools and they look at the libraries. And I think a lot of people that do not support building this library do not use our library. I think the library was once and is the, one of the jewels of our neighborhood. And I think we need, I support you fully. I know that it costs money for park and rec. I, I look at Media Library that's been renovated. I look at Ludington Library, not Ludington, at Radnor Library. 
These are beautiful spaces that invite infants to senior citizens. I fully support this renovation. If I were to hit the lottery tomorrow, I would give that money to you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Amadio. Uh, anybody else in that row? Um, uh, uh, in the back row? Anybody like to speak? Um, uh, last chance for anybody? Um, yes, uh, Ms. Amter. Hi, Rachel Amder. I live in 3-2. Um, I moved here in 1996. Um, the library has been a part of all of the phases of my life, from when I had little kids to middle schoolers to I now use the library. I love the fact that I can request a book online and they email me when it's there and I can just go pick it up and I don't have to look through all the stacks. Um, I think since the first uh, year that we moved here, they've been talking about renovating the library. Um, and I, I, I've lost track. There was the on Darby Road, then it was going to be on Eagle Road where the bubblegum factory, then Brookline School, then, oh, maybe at Haverford Reserve. I, I fully support the library. Thank you very much for doing it. Thank you for getting it done. It's going to be a gem of our township going forward forever. And maybe some of the reason that it costs so much now is because we only spent bubble gum wrappers on it for the last 20 years. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Amder. Um, is anybody else, would anybody else like to speak on this topic? Um, hearing none, thank you all. Thank you for your comments. Um, I certainly invite any of my colleagues to hear, uh, to. Um, uh, answer any of the questions that they heard. Um, I appreciate the comments um, with regard to the parking spaces. Um, it is, uh, we cannot do this project without creating at least 10 parking spaces. I am not aware sitting here today that the space we are purchasing is, um, um, is limited to 11, um, but it has to be a minimum of 10. We, that is a ruling from our zoning board and, and uh, ended up being a, uh, an agreement reached between the zoning board and the township. Um, and uh, otherwise, uh, our renovation was not going to be able to happen. So I, I, I do not believe we are limited to 11.5 or 11 parking spaces. I'll ask anybody to correct me on the board if I have that wrong. Um, but I do, but I do want to make clear that people understand this project cannot be done without um, the township um, creating uh, at least ten dedicated spaces to the to the um, uh, to the library and for parking. Um, uh, Mrs. McHugh, you asked about a cap. Um, there's. Um, we do a budget, and so we will budget everything that is necessary to do this um, to do this renovation, and then we will stay within that budget. If uh, we will include a contingency within this to handle, you know, unexpected costs, um, which happens in construction. Um, as of right now, is that correct? Um, a project total has been published of twenty-one point eight million. That includes a contingency. And last. Um, Larry, can I just say one thing? And what's the amount that's already been been raised? Like, isn't it three three million from the ARPA funds, and one it's, million? It's from... it's three million from the ARPA funds and three million from the grant that we got from the, the federal yeah. government. So, so that's six, right? Right. So the and money the money we're putting out is is less than that. And I think that the twenty five million number that is being talked about generally by in, by some people is a misunderstanding that when we borrowed the bond money, um, the bond money also included uh, purchase of a fire truck. It also included solar panels. It also included renovations from the stadium. Um, and I'm blanking on the other thing right now, but it, it was not just for the library project. Um, and for specifics, so let me be, um, the, the RACP grant that we got was a million dollars. The Keystone grant that we received was $750,000. Um, the Omnibus Appropriations grant, which came from the federal government, was $2 million. Um, and the library is also contributing $1 million. Um, and then I guess that doesn't even include the ARPA funds, which is... And then um, that means that there can be more raised in... Number for a cap. 
number of projects done, but we will not exceed 25. This is our, I'm just looking for a number of like, if the project goes over this much, this is what we're going to do for this one particular project. So there should be a solid number in that, not, well, we're just going to exceed that. Mr. President, if I may. Uh, yes, thank you, Rondick. So j just to address your, your question, and, and unfortunately, I don't have the, the final budget number directly in front of me. Um, I, w I wish I did. I don't know if anyone else happens to have whatever the final budget number was. But a budget was created for this project. I'm just, if you can, if you can, I'm just going to, I'm going to answer your question. If you can just give me one second, please. So a budget was created for this project. The way the government financing works is that we had that budget. That budget was uh, arrived at after uh, contracting with an architect to come up with a plan for the library um, and then kind of estimating what they thought, you know, the different contractors and so on would come in at. So a budget was created. That budget then has to be funded. Unlike the federal government, we can't just make up money. We don't just, we can't just say we have a million dollars and we have a million dollars. We have to actually have it. So what happens is that budget's created and then we fund the budget. That budget today, as it stands, is fully funded through a combination of grants, ARPA money, township contribution, in other words, uh, general fund contribution, and uh, uh, the library is, you know, has already put up some money and they're, they're pledging to fundraise and do some other money. Now, to the extent that when this doesn't mean that the library can just go out and do whatever they want and put Van Gogh pictures up on the walls or anything like that. If the amount of money that they try to spend were to exceed the amount that we have allocated for it, the Board of Commissioners, as we sit here, would have to approve that allocation, whether that be through the annual budget process, which is a public document and which is debated and discussed. I believe it's actually coming up for 2024. Um, so it would either be part of our budget or our annual budget process, or it would have to be approved by the Board of Commissioners at one of our regular meetings. Um, so it's not that they can just go spend whatever they want. It's that they have a finite number, and I wish I had that number in front of me right now. But if they were to exceed that, they would have it would have to be approved in some form or fashion by us. So thank you. I do understand how a budget works. Um, so what I'm hearing here is you have close to like what twenty one point eight million for this project um, to add up all the Ms. McHugh, we're we're we are. This is not a Q&A about this. This is public comment. We've heard your public comment and your, the, 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 the budget right now for this, for this is approximately $21.8 million. Yeah. Well, you're saying cap what, what I, and, and, and we are not going to engage in a back and forth, but I appreciate that you raised this issue and it is worth noting this. It is not today's board can't tell tomorrow's board you can't spend money on this or you can't spend money on that we can't build a rock so big that we can't lift it if we do this approve this project and a year from now of any project a project has cost overruns it's up to that board whatever board is in place at that time to consider it to say no or to say yes so the notion of we'll never spend more than x on any project it isn't isn't binding on any on any board. Our budgets are binding on us. In the following year, we would have to put something in the budget to do uh, if if costs were to increase, and of course, if costs were to decrease, that would be money that is then available to go back into the general fund or go into reserves or or pay down um, uh, pay down bonds uh, ahead of time if that's possible. But that's. The, the notion of a cap having some binding effect on any township project um, is um, is not is not legally binding us. It could be it it, it can be it, it can be something that that voters can hold us to. It's something that we, because the budgeting process is a public uh, process, is something that um, uh, that that every board and every member of the board is is, is subject to public review. Um, and, and that is how the process works. Um, so as of right now, what is budgeted is $21.8 million. That includes contingencies that uh, consider potential overruns. Um, yes, Mr. Quinn? And they can apply for more grants too, to offset costs too, right? There's uh, no right, of course. And there's, and there's, and there's also uh, not taken into account is any fundraising that we anticipate to be able to be done um, as this project gets underway, I think, um, uh, there's going to be a great deal of enthusiasm as people see ground break on this, as they see projects start to happen. I think opportunities 
um, for people to fundraise, for people to name rooms or to undertake certain charitable projects associated with the, um, uh, with the construction and, and with the new library itself, uh, I think are, um, uh, are going to be opportunities that we just haven't yet seen. Um, but I have, um, I, I do have a high degree of confidence that we will, um, that we will be pleasantly surprised by fundraising efforts. Um, do any of my colleagues have anything else they want to add at this point? I, I just wanted to um, maybe go even a little bit farther in terms of what you talked about in terms of One Mill Road. In terms of One Mill Road and the, the house across the street to secure the parking, the, the, the zoning requirement in the agreement way was 10 spots, but I, and we're obviously, there's no engineer up here and we would have to design what that parking lot will look like for the spots, but the it's with full anticipation that it'll be more than 10 or 11 spots. Um, all right, thank you, uh, Commissioner McCluskey. Does anybody else have anything to add? Um, um, thank you. Um, thank you all for your questions and comments. Um, next on our agenda is um, consideration of the contract awards for the library renovation and expansion project. Mr. Forsty Grout. I would like to make a motion to award the general construction contract to Rycon Construction Incorporated of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the amount of ten million nineteen thousand four hundred and sixty-five dollars, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on this uh, contract? Just a question: Do we have any experience working with? This term. Uh, is our construction manager here this evening? This is Ken Man Matthews with CB Development. Can you make uh, sure that mic is on? Just yep. Thank you. Uh, as far as the four uh, the contractors that are there this evening, uh, we've personally worked uh, working with Rycon right now. They're a national company, so they're, um, they're actually, I think, 100% union. Um, so that takes care of them. And then the other two contractors, Dolan Mechanical, and uh, the other contractor we've worked with as well. And so No problems. No. We've worked, uh, Dolan just did Chatham Park and Cooperstown Elementary. So they were great to work with. Great, thank you. Thank you. Uh, actually, before you walk away, <laughs> I, I do have a question, and I'm glad you're here today. I, I have reviewed, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the project the bids that came in. I reviewed uh, the memo that I believe you created or your company created, yep. um, along with some of the uh, addition subtractions that kind of got us to the final numbers. Um, two twofold, and, and one is, and I'll just make this cumulatively because we're going to be you know, asked to vote on four different four different companies. Do all four of the companies satisfy our responsible contract ordinance? Uh, that it has to be determined still. That there's a, a window of time per your ordinance. I don't have it specifically in front of me. And John, maybe you could uh, they, help answer that. They all represented that they would. That they would. Uh, they can. They had. To, there was a questionnaire that was part of the responsible contract or ordinance that was in the bid specifications. They had to fill out. Okay. Um, so the fact and that would be clarified if, if council uh, desires to approve these contracts, that the next step would be to move to the verification of that issue uh, right. before, it, before the contract would be finalized. Thank you. But uh, all of them do public work and have done a, a lot of work in the so you, past. You feel comfortable? There's so not going to be any issues with we, it. That you would, uh, we would think that they would pass the responsible contract or ordinance. Okay. The, the other question I had was with, was specifically with regards to. Uh, uh, the the, con the contract that we're talking about right now, RightCon, I, it looks like based on some of the uh, adjustments, uh, the the final bid is coming in a little bit higher than the initial bid based on the adjustments. But uh, as the project manager, you still feel comfortable that that number is uh, not a problem given the owner contingency that's there to cover it. Uh, generally speaking, as uh, Mr. Holmes pointed out, the project has a contingency built into it. And that's, you know, there was a cost estimate that was done. And then these bids have come in within within reason of what those cost estimates were. Um, so it's it's pretty very close to budget. Uh, so that the contingencies that are in place, we feel are, are reasonable for unforeseen work. 
Okay. When you're doing a renovation, the biggest risk to the project is the unforeseen work and getting out of the ground with foundations. Uh, so that's really where the concern is. So this is a healthy contingency for this project. Okay, good. Because I, I will say, based on the contingency in relationship to the uh, the, the difference between, you know, after additions and subtractions, um, I feel comfortable enough with voting for this, but I would just make a statement that, uh, you know, I, I will be monitoring, or at least as a commissioner, I will be keeping an eye on the, the spending development of this project um, to make sure that we don't start running down that uh, owner contingency number too quickly and, and go into an area where people come back and start asking to expand the budget. Um, I think we have a healthy budget and I definitely would like to see it stay within that budget. Understood. That's, a, you know, that's our goal and that's our job to help do that other than, you know, unforeseen conditions that would, uh, that you have to deal with. Outside of that, uh, that's the goal. Thank you. I'd also like to, add, because you, Mr. Gondick, mentioned that um, we added a couple things into the uh, requirements and a couple of these things are adding automatic hand dryers and automatic um, flush valve, which may seem like something that's expendable, but actually given that, given health, public health concerns, those are actually very important um, additions. So, um, and also I see that there's stainless steel exterior guardrails being added. Could you tell us what those are exactly? Sure, uh, it's no different than the stairs. You walk up here um, just for uh, long-term maintenance, the uh, stainless steel is essentially maintenance-free. You wipe it down. If you do painted handrails, it's constant maintenance, it chips. Uh, so the stainless steel handrails are something that is very much recommended. So is it fair to say that some of the things that we're asking to be put into the library are to minimize um, upkeep on the building and to make it better for the public to use every single day? Uh, yeah, there you, you put together alternates uh, that you feel are, are reasonable, and you know something like the handrail, um, it get, helps with maintenance over time. So yes, and especially the as you talked about the hands-free stuff, uh, especially with children, mm -hmm. um, you know, flushing things down the toilet so it doesn't get clogged. So uh, it may just seem to make sense. Thank you. Uh, do any of my colleagues have any other questions for Mr. Matthews? Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions or comments on this contract? Mr. Berman, would you call the roll? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Um, Next motion for us to consider is awarding the plumbing and fire protection construction contract. Uh, Mr. Forsty Grubb. Motion to award the plumbing and fire protection construction contract to Dolan Mechanical Incorporated of Sicklerville, New Jersey in the amount of $933,000, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the plumbing and fire protection, cons uh, plumbing and fire protection construction contract? Hearing none, Mr. Berman? Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Next motion for us to consider is the awarding of the HVAC construction contract. <laughs> Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Motion to the award the HVAC construction contract to Dolan Mechanical of Sicklerville, New Jersey in the amount of $2,276,000, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments on the HVAC construction contract? Hearing none, Mr. Berman. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, finally, uh, motion to award the electrical construction contract. Uh, Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Motion to award the electrical construction contract to AJM Electric Incorporated of Chester, Pennsylvania in the amount of $1,635,830, submitting the lowest responsible bid. Second. 
we have a motion and a second. Any questions or comments from my colleagues? Hearing none. Commissioner Gondek. Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp. Yes. Commissioner McCluskey. Yes. Commissioner Cavender. Yes. Commissioner Quinn. Yes. Commissioner Hart. Yes. Commissioner Wexler. Yes. Commissioner Trombetta. Yes. Commissioner Holmes. Yes. Uh, before we move on to the next item, the ordinance uh, of the acquisition of Mill Road, I just want to thank um, everybody that was involved um, in this process, um, everybody uh, associated with and participating in the library board, um, our um, uh, our director of our library, um, our township staff and township manager uh, and township engineers um, who have worked very hard for this. Um, and I want to thank all the uh, citizens of Haverford Township who have um, um, who have um, provided valuable input um, on where this should be, on what it should look like, um, and more than anything on the need for it. Uh, I commend my colleagues for voting for this unanimously. Um, I, like, uh, uh, like Ms. Amder, have been waiting a very long time to see this happen, um, and I'm very proud to be part of it. And I want to thank um, everybody that was involved. So um, please accept uh, my congratulations and my thanks to all of you. Um, our final next step and our first steps to making this happen uh, is the uh, second reading of the uh, uh, ordinance number P11 of 2023. Commissioner Forsty Grubb. Motion to adopt the second reading of ordinance number P11-2023, authorizing the acquisition of One Mill Road, Havertown, Pennsylvania, by deed in lieu of condemnation. Subject to review, acceptance and approval of the final agreement by the township solicitor and by the township manager. Second. We have a motion and a second. This is something we discussed at our last meeting, but I certainly invite any questions or comments from my colleagues. Yes, I have Mr. a few. Um, I, I know this need, needs to be done because of the zone zoning, but I have issues with um, that. I just need to ask before we vote on the, on this. I will vote yes on this, but I need to make sure that this will not impact the rest of uh, the area there and the way it come comes out. What way will 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 uh, the entrance be on Dar Dar on Dar Darby Road or on Mill and how, how will that be, be done? And um, will there be tree, trees there to keep the lights away, away, away from the na na or na na neighbors there? And, um, and, um, I, I, and the, the uh, surrounding streets, will we have to work with them to ma make sure that there isn't any well issues because there'll be more, more cars to go down surrounding street streets there when they can't find spots to park and stuff and I just need all those resolved so I so I well you get what I mean by resolved. yeah no of course I appreciate your point and I I, I suspect Commissioner Quinn that uh, you will probably of the nine of us be the most active in terms of um, uh, of uh, reviewing and supervising and regulating what that um, what that parking space ultimately looks like. I think the issue of ingress and egress on Mill Road versus Darby Road is very important, especially with Darby Road being divided um, at that at, uh, in that area. So um, uh, it makes more sense for everything to go on and off Mill. But honestly, I expect our police and our township engineers to be. Um, you know, to be the best arbiters of that. Uh, but obviously you um, are the person closest to the neighbors there. And uh, won't, won't, we won't be able to park, park overnight there and uh, stuff like that. That won't be a lot where say some, 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 some or, or, or somebody's gonna go to the Phil, Phil's game and needs to park, park some, some, like someplace. And they end up to park, park, they park, they park, park there. It won't be used after, after, um, Again, I would expect us to do, I mean, that is, that will be the library's parking lot and what I would, I, it would be, um, so the police it would be their obligation to make sure they yeah, that, that it's being, you know, that it's being properly supervised. And if they don't satisfy that obligation, we will impose an obligation on them to do that. Um, I appreciate that point. It is a long walk to the P&W from there. So I don't know how many, <laughs> Just saying I don't know how many Phil's 
Fans, fans so they're going to fart there, yeah. No, no, of course. Yeah. I, I get that. I mean, I do. I think one thing for us to consider, of course, is the last time I heard this number, um, there were 235,000 visits to that library in, in the last year that those numbers were kept. Um, and um, I, you know, I, I'm not sure that visits are going to go up. I think part, I think traffic there is going to improve dramatically because there won't be so many people circling the block waiting for somebody to leave uh, the <coughs> current parking lot that that now services the library. So um, I think that um, I think we're going to find that, uh, that that this is going to end up being great benefit to the and this is just to the neighborhood. One more quick thing too is if. Um, we find find a spot that's in the next month or two that that is not like we don't need to to take this and um, have the spot bots there. Are we contingent to buy buy buying this and we can sell 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 it, sell it again? Or is there anything in it that keep keep the keep that, that keeps us from ha have? I think that's more for you, John. To... No, there's there's nothing. Uh, in this agreement that would prevent us from disposing of the property in a, in a different way. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. If you're aware of a better parking spot, yeah, do let us know. It is across the street. Um, and, um, uh, but uh, thank you, Commissioner Quinn. Any other, uh, any other of my colleagues have any questions or comments on uh, uh, ordinance P11? Uh, hearing none. Commissioner Gondek? Yes. Commissioner Forsty Grupp? Yes. Commissioner McCluskey? Yes. Commissioner Cavender? Yes. Commissioner Quinn? Yes. Commissioner Hart? Yes. Commissioner Wexler? Yes. Commissioner Trombetta? Yes. Commissioner Holmes? Yes. Um. Um, once again, I want to thank everybody who came out tonight and who have come out in the past um, to provide us uh, input on the evaluation and um, uh, ultimate approval of the library project. Um, thank you all for your comments and your attention tonight and all the other nights that we've, um, uh, that we've uh, entertained uh, comment and, and considered testimony on these issues. Um, and uh, unless uh, anybody else has anything to say on this, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Moved. We are adjourned.